Navigating the streets of New York can be quite challenging, even with your GPS on. But what if your GPS fails you in the middle of your ride? How'd that make you feel? Lost? Well, according to John O'Keefe, you shouldn't be alarmed because you already have a backup in your brain. This is the story of a CUNY graduate who became a Nobel laureate and the discovery of place cells. The year is 1963. John O'Keefe is summoned to the Dean's office at the City College of New York. In order to get there, he'll have to face his fears and navigate the streets of Manhattan in his freshly painted yellow taxicab. O'Keefe, a South Bronx native, never planned on becoming a taxi driver. In fact, after his father's dreams of being an aircraft mechanic were dashed by a shipyard accident in World War II, John picked them up for himself, studying aeronautical engineering at NYU and taking a job at the Grumman Aircraft Corporation. But the grueling schedule involving over 100 miles commuting a day in rush hour traffic proved too difficult and O'Keefe decided to settle for the freedom of a full-time college student. Luckily, this freedom came at no cost. The tuition-free City College of New York offered a wide range of courses and allowed this young man to pursue his interests without compromise. He took classes in filmmaking, advanced English literature, physics, and a wide range of psychology and philosophy courses, paying no attention to faculty or discipline boundaries. It was here that he also got his first taste of experimental brain research. At the time, there were no neuroscience courses offered, but he took courses in physiological psychology and was allowed to join a team working on pigeon exploratory behavior. After reaching the dean's office, O'Keefe was surprised to find out that he had accumulated enough credits to receive not one, but several degrees. O'Keefe opted to major in psychology and minor in philosophy and graduated that same year. John's interest in neuroscience led him to focus his postdoctoral research on a very specific part of the brain, the hippocampus. Surprisingly similar across mammals, the hippocampus has traditionally been known as a formation in the brain that contained answers to questions of learning and memory. But in the 1940s, this tiny part of the brain was also marked as the possible location of the so-called cognitive map a stimuli-based concept of spatial awareness developed by psychologist Edward Tolman and John O'Keefe was excited to dig deep into it. In 1971, O'Keefe developed a series of experiments designed to monitor brain activity in rats. What he was looking for were firing patterns or bursts of activity on a single cell level that he would later be able to correlate to certain aspects of animal behavior. The first part of the experiment turned out to be a complete success. The electrodes connected to rats' brains returned with the lovely chirping sound of cellular activity. Unfortunately, correlating this activity to any of the common patterns in animals' behavior proved to be extremely difficult. In the period of the next few months, O'Keefe started realizing that these bursts of activity did not have anything to do with what the animal was doing or even why it was doing it, but rather where it was doing it. The cells were reacting to their location in the environment. What O'Keefe discovered was a biological basis of navigation, a place cell. In his book, published in 1978, O'Keefe went on to present his findings and offer a somewhat blunt prediction. Place cells are cells that constitute spatial awareness in humans, but they're not the only ones. The hippocampus and associated brain areas contain networks of cells that create geographical maps and perform navigational computations. Nevertheless, many found it hard to accept that the human hippocampus could have a similar function to that of a rodent. Luckily, there was a new player in town.
Duke Nukem. By the early 90s, advancements in technology allowed alternative ways of experimenting, this time on humans. Emptied of monsters, guns, and an equal number of rats, Duke Nukem became a complex environment with multiple rooms and pathways. A virtual space volunteers could learn how to navigate while their brains were being scanned for the clues of the cognitive map. The study proved that the human hippocampus and surrounding areas of the brain become active whenever a person is engaged in spatial navigation. In addition, there was a good correlation between the accuracy of navigation and the amount of blood flow in the hippocampus. A decade later, an experimental study conducted with taxi drivers showed that the hippocampi of expert and highly practiced human navigators were larger in volume than the ones found in average humans. Little did young O'Keefe know, as he drove a taxi during his days at City College, that he was playing out an experiment which would go on to support his own theories 50 years later. In 2014, John O'Keefe, a former CUNY student with wide-ranging interests and a passion for neuroscience, received a Nobel Prize in Medicine for his discovery of cells that constitute a positioning system in the brain. So the next time your GPS fails you, try to remember that our brains come with a fully functional one at no additional cost.